Mishneh Torah, one chapter a day, Arachim v'charami, chapter 6. Halacha 1. When a person says this is consecrated for the sake of improvements to the temple, this is a dedication offering for the sake of improvements to the temple, or this is a dedication offering for the sake of heaven, or he makes similar statements with regard to his property as a whole saying that it is all consecrated for the sake of improvements to the temple, as a dedication offering for the sake of improvements to the temple, or as a dedication offering for the sake of heaven. The property should be given for improvements to the temple. If, however, he said that the property should be given as a dedication offering without making any specifications, it should be given to the priests, for unspecified dedication offerings are given to the priests as Numbers or uh, Devarim 18.14 states, all of the dedication offerings from the Jewish people will be yours. Halacha 2. A person may make a dedication offering from his cattle, his sheep, his Canaanite servants, and maidservants, and his ancestral fields. He should not, however, designate all of his cattle, all of his servants, all of his fields, nor all of any type of movable property that he owns as a dedication offering, as implied by Vaikrad 2728, from everything that he owns. If he gives all he owns from a particular type of property as a dedication offering, even if he gives everything he owns as a dedication offering, his gift is binding. This applies whether he designates the dedication offering for the priests or for the improvement of the temple. Halakha 3. When a person gives all of his property as a dedication offering or, consecrate, or consecrates it, we take everything that he owns, even the tefillin, on his head. Needless to say, this includes his tools and his clothes, for he consecrated or gave as a, dedica as a dedication offering all of his possessions. Halakha 4. What is the difference between dedication offerings designated for priests and those dedicated to heaven? Dedication offerings to heaven become consecrated property and must be redeemed for, the, redeemed for their worth. The payment is given for the sake of improvements to the temple and then the possessions become ordinary property. Dedication offerings designated for the priests, by contrast, can never be redeemed. Instead, they are given to the priests like truma. Concerning dedication offerings designated for the priests, Vaikra 2728 states, It shall neither be sold nor redeemed, i.e. it shall ne neither be sold to another person nor redeemed by the owner. Halakha 5. When a person designates land or movable property as a dedication offering, it is given to a priest in the watch, serving at the time that the dedication offering was designated. As long as the dedication offering for the priest is in the homes of the owner, it is like consecrated property in all regards. As Vaikrat 2728 states, all dedication offerings are consecrated as holy unto God. Once it is given to the priests, it is considered as ordinary property. As Numbers 1814 states, all of the dedication offerings from the Jewish people will be yours. Halakha 6. If a priest has a field that was a dedication offering or an ancestral field that he, acquired after, that he acquired after the Jubilee and he designates it as a dedication offering, it is considered as a dedication offering and should be given to his brethren, the priests, as implied by Levitic, as, as implied by Vaikra 2721, it will become the priests like his ancestral property. This teaches that a field designated it designated as a dedication offering that a priest acquires is like an ancestral field owned by an Israelite. If he designates it as a dedication offering, it becomes sanctified immediately. <coughs> Excuse me. Halakha 7. When a priest sells a field that he had acquired after it was designated as a dedication offering, and then the purchaser consecrates it, even if the purchaser was the original owner who designated it as a dedication offering, it is like the consecration of acquired property and it returns to the priest who sold it in the Jubilee year. Land or, unmo or movable property that belongs to the priests or the Levites, by contrast, may not be designated as a dedication offering. The rationale is that, with regard to the fields granted to them, Vaikra 2534 states, for it is an eternal inheritance for them, and an association is established between movable property and land with regard to dedication offerings. 
as Vaikra 2728 states, from anything he owns and from his ancestral field. Halakha 8. When a person consecrates animals that had been consecrated to be offered on the altar for the sake of improvements to the temple, the second consecration is of consequence. The animal should be evaluated and redeemed and its worth given for the sake of improvements to the temple. Afterwards it should be offered for the purpose for which it was originally consecrated. When, however, a person consecrates animals that had been consecrated for the sake of improvements to the temple, with the intent that they be offered on, this, on the altar, saying this is a burnt offering or a peace offering, or he designates them as a dedication offering to the priests, his act is of no consequence. For animals that had been consecrated for the sake of improvements to the temple cannot be consecrated to be offered on the altar or designated as dedication offerings because a person cannot consecrate an entity that does not belong to him. Halakha 9 When a person says this ox will be consecrated after 30 days and slaughters it within the 30 days, it is permit, permitted to benefit from it. If he consecrated it to the altar, it is consecrated to the altar. If by contrast he says this animal is consecrated immediately after 30 days and he slaughters it within those 30 days, it is forbidden to benefit from it. If he consecrated it to the altar within the 30 days, the consecration does not take effect. Halakha 10. When a person consecrates an animal designated as a burnt offering for the sake of improvements to the temple, only its evaluation by the temple treasurers hold back its slaughter. According to rabbinic decree, however, it should, be, should not be slaughtered until it is redeemed. Therefore, if he transgressed and slaughtered it before it was redeemed, it is acceptable. Halakha 11. A person may designate as a dedication offering, whether set aside for the priests or for improvements to the temple, animals consecrated as sacrifices of the highest degree of sanctity, or sacrifices of a lesser degree of sanctity. If he was liable to replace these sacrifices, he must pay their value, whether to the priests or for the sake of improvements to the temple. After they are redeemed, he should then offer the sacrifices for their original purposes. Halakha 12. What is the redemption process when a person vowed to bring a particular animal as a sacrifice, and then designated it as a dedication offering? We evaluate how much a person would be willing to give for the right of sacrificing this animal as a burnt offering, even though he is not able to do so. How, uh, whoever gives this amount may offer, f may offer this animal for the sacrifice for which it was originally pledged. Halakha 13. When an Israelite designates a firstborn animal, whether unblemished or blemished, as a dedication offering for the sake of heaven, the designation takes effect. Needless to say, if the priest designates it as a dedication offering for the sake of heaven after it enters his domain, the designation takes effect. Halakha 14. How is it to be redeemed? We evaluate how much a person would be willing to give for the right for his, for this firstborn to be his, so that he will have the right to give it to whichever priest he desires, to his relative or his friend. Whoever gives this amount may take the firstborn and give it to whichever priest he desires. The money is given for the sake of improvements to the temple. Halakha 15. When a person designates an animal selected as a tithe offering, as a dedication offering, it is as if he designated an animal pledged to be sacrificed as a peace offering. The rationale is that he is not liable to replace it. Halakha 16. When a person consecrates his half shekel for the sake of improvements to the temple, the consecration is binding. If one consecrates Bikurim for the sake of improvements to the temple, the consecration does not take effect. If, however, the priest to whom the Bikurim are given consecrates them after they enter his domain, the consecration is binding. Halakha 17. When a person designates half of his servant or half of his maidservant as a dedication offering, he and the priests are joint owners. If, however, he consecrates half his servant and designates half his servant as a dedication offering to heaven, he is consecrated entirely as we explained. Whenever one consecrates his Kananite servant or maidservant or consecrates all of his property and he owns servants, their physical person becomes consecrated. Therefore, it is forbidden to benefit from them until they are redeemed. Halakha 18. The temple treasurers may not take the worth of the servants from other people and free them. Instead, they sell them to others, and those others free them if they desire. 
Halakha 19. When one consecrates his servant's hands, anything he earns beyond what is required for his sustenance is consecrated. How should this servant sustain himself? He should borrow the money required for his sustenance, work and repay the debt. This is allowed provided he always works for less than a pruta and pays it. For if he earned an entire pruta, it would be acquired by the temple treasury as soon as he earned it. Halakha 20. When a person consecrates himself, he consecrated only his worth. He is obligated to give that amount to the temple treasury. He may earn money and use it for his sustenance, for his sustenance, for his physical person did not become consecrated as that of a servant does. Halakha 21. A person cannot consecrate an entity that does not belong to him. What is implied? If he designates his son, his daughter, his Hebrew servant or Hebrew maidservant, or a field he acquired as, as a dedication offering, they do not become dedication offerings. For a person cannot consecrate an entity when its physical person or substance is not his. Halakha 22. A person may not consecrate an entity that is not in his domain. What is implied? A person entrusted an article to a colleague and the latter denied possession of it. The owners cannot consecrate it. If, however, the watchman did not deny possession of it, it is considered in its owner's domain, no matter where it is located. Halakha 23. When does the above apply? With regard to movable property. Different rules apply to landed property that was stolen, and the thief denied having taken it. If the original owner could have the land expropriated through, le through legal process, he has the right to consecrate it, even though he has not yet expropriated it. For the land itself is always considered in the domain of its legitimate owners. Halakha 24. When a person steals from his colleague and the original owner does not despair of recovery, neither of them can consecrate it. The robber cannot because the article does not belong to him, and the owner cannot because it is not in his possession. Similar laws apply in all analogous situations. Halakha 25. The following laws apply when a person was selling squash, eggs or the like, and a prospective purchaser comes, takes one and then departs. If the price of each particular article is fixed, it is as if a price was established and the seller cannot consecrate this squash, for it is not in his domain. If the price is not fixed and he consecrated it, it is consecrated because it is still in his domain, for the prospective purchaser did not take it with the intent to steal it. <clears throat> Halakha 26 A person cannot consecrate an article that has not yet come into existence. What is implied? If a person says, what my net will bring up from the sea is consecrated, or the fruit my field will produce is designated as a dedication offering, his words are of no consequence. Halakha 27. When a person tells a colleague, when I repurchase this field which I sold you, it is consecrated. Although he repurchases it, it is not consecrated. The rationale is that it was not in his possession when he consecrated it. Halakha 28. Similarly, when a person consecrates the work to be produced by his wife's hands, she may work and partake of her earnings. The remainder is not consecrated. If he tells her, may your hands be consecrated to their maker, since they are under lean to him, the profits of all the work that she produces are consecrated. To what can this be compared? To one who says, this tree is consecrated, in which instance all the fruit it produces is consecrated. Similar laws apply in all analogous situations. Halakha 29. When a person tells a colleague, the field that I will sell you will be consecrated when I buy it back from you. The consecration takes effect when he buys it back. The rationale is that it is in his possession originally and he has the possibility of consecrating it. If one tells a colleague, the field that I entrusted to you as security will be consecrated when I redeem it from you, the field becomes consecrated when he redeems it. The rationale is that he has the potential to redeem it. The consecration is effective even if it was given as a security for a fixed time, because he has the potential to redeem it after that time. Halakha 30. Although a person rents out a house to a colleague, if he retracts and consecrates it, the consecration is effective and the rental arrangement is terminated. If the tenant dwells there, he violates the prohibition against misappropriating sacred property. Halakha 31. It appears to me that even though a person cannot consecrate an entity that has not, come in, has not come into being, if he says, I pledge to consecrate it, he is obligated to consecrate it when it will come into being to fulfil his vow. If he does not consecrate it, he transgresses the prohibitions 
do not delay in paying it, and he shall not desecrate his word, and fails to fulfil the positive commandment, he shall act in accordance with all that he uttered with his mouth, as is true with regard to all other vows. Halakha 32. What is implied? When a person says, I pledge to consecrate everything that my net will bring up from the sea, I pledge to give the fruit produced by this field to the poor, I pledge to designate as a, designate, as a dedication offering, or give for the sake of captives all of my earnings of this year, or makes any statement of this like, he is obligated to give and or perform what he pledged when the article comes into his possession. For these and all similar statements are vows, not acts of consecration. Halakha 33. Support for this can be drawn from the statements of Yaakov our Patriarch, in Bereshit 28.22, And everything that you will give me I will tithe. And later, in 31.30.13, it states, Where you took a vow, and, when a person says, I will not depart from this world until I become a Nazarite, he is obligated to observe a Nazarite vow, although he did not actually take such a vow. Since he said that he would take a Nazarite vow, he is obligated to observe those restrictions. This law parallels that it is appropriate to rule in this manner. Halakha 34. A consecration that is made in error is not binding. What is implied? If one says when a black ox will go out of the building first, it will be consecrated. Should a white ox go out first, it is not consecrated. If he says when a gold dinar comes into my hand first, it is consecrated. Should a silver dinar come up, it is not consecrated. If he says... When a barrel of wine comes into my hand first, it is consecrated. Should a barrel of oil come up, it is not consecrated. This applies whether wine is more expensive than oil in that place, or oil is more expensive than wine. If he attempts to extend the consecration to a second entity, saying, The status of this is the same as that of the other, the second is consecrated. Similar laws apply in all analogous situations.